topics today is on fabrication and structural evolution of high temperature polymer derived SIOC uh, ceramic fibers. So before going on to my presentation, uh, I'll have I have a short overview of what the motivation and background behind my research and also the fabrication and synthesis process of this SIOC fibers and the characterization techniques that I've used mainly uh, uh, microscopic and spectroscopic analysis techniques and the high temperature properties of these fibers. So, as we all know that uh, uh, PDCs uh, or the PDC uh, or the polymer derived ceramic synthesis techniques is actually uh, one of the um, advanced techniques that where you can actually modify the microstructural uh, uh, units of the PDCs uh, at the atomic or microscopic level, where, and that's why actually the PDCs are becoming nowadays. Uh, I mean, you can see actually PDC related research as well as PDCs in uh, in all uh, in the last 30 years in almost everywhere where they've been using uh, for they've been uh, they've been being used for high temperature applications such as fibers in coatings films as well as sensors and also for reinforcements now um, here i'm on the right hand side uh, i'm showing a schematic of a cross section of a ge uh, turbine where you can see that uh, pmc or polymer matrix composites are being used for comparatively low temperature applications whereas cmcs are being used for hot engine sections such as turbine blades, shroud, as well as uh, exhaust nozzles. So based on this uh, 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 research and also these uh, applications, we decided to look onto the uh, polymer derived ceramic fibers, where our group started first working with hand spinning technique, where the former PhD student before me, uh, Jhongkan Ren, uh, tried the hand drawing process, where he actually used a polysilogen to uh, draw hand spun <laughs> fibers and then uh, then for, for then after further paralysis we got SIC and fibers out of it then later we moved on to electro spinning technique that is being shown on the right figure here where we've tried uh, to electro spin SIC OC ceramic fibers uh, using this technique where you can see that you can actually get a large fiber mat after the electro spinning which can be then paralyzed to get SIOC ceramic fiber mats so using this technique, I've tried three different siloxans. We've mainly we've chosen siloxan because of their chemical and thermodynamic stabilities as, uh, as the SIOC has actually a very good thermodynamic, thermodynamic stability because of the silicon carbon bond presence in the structure as well as the oxygen present in the silica tetrahedra provides the flexibility to the fiber mats. And also it's easier to process complicated structures using these fiber mats. And that's why we all tried the electric spinning technique as as it gave us about a 15 by 15 centimeter square fiber mat. And also it was easy to perform the characterization techniques such as uh, the, the uh, spectroscopic, te spectroscopic techniques, as well as the uh, in, uh, trying to do the tensile testings and uh, such, and, and such uh, characterizations. And also these fiber mats had, uh, se have several applications such as we can, uh, can be easily used for us making CMCs, as well as we've also try to actually this fiber ceramic fiber mats in uh, energy storage devices. Now the three siloxans that we've tried are actually shown over here. They're, they're, uh, you can see the molecular, stru molecular structures are shown over here, whereas uh, DTTS and TPTS has similar structure where the TPTS, the ox silicon to oxygen ratio for TPTS were three to two. But for DT DDTS, we had uh, uh, further uh, phenyl side groups. Now, after producing the, those ceramic fibers, we first tried to characterize, to make sure that this ceramic fiber mass is indeed uh, have the silicon, oxygen, and carbon in them. So we did the XPS characterization techniques, where you can see that I'm, I've shown the elemental compositions here, where it shows the presence of silicon, oxygen, and carbon in all three fiber mats. However, you can see that all, uh, we found out that all three uh, fiber, ceramic fiber mats had, uh, had gained oxygens during the heat treatments, and also the carbon content in the uh, ceramic fiber mats, as you can see, has actually uh, changed after the pyrolysis where the, uh, you can see that the, for the DTDS, we got the highest amount of carbon and for the DDTS, uh, which had the phenyl actually side group had the lowest amount of carbon presence in it. Uh, and, the, and, and, the, and the highest presence of carbon in the samples are also actually, uh, uh, are also actually plotted here, where you can see that for the one that had highest amount of carbon also showed highest amount of carbon-carbon bonds in the structure. Uh, 
Then we moved on to do the characterization techniques using SEM and TEM. And the top uh, figures here over here uh, shows the SEM images of those uh, ceramic fibers, where we found out that all the fibers were uniform in diameters along the lengths. And, and the average diameter for all three types were between 0.5 to 3 micrometers. Uh, however, uh, for if, if you look at the TEM pictures below here, you can see that these TPTS and DTTS derived SIOC fiber mats were actually hollow in the core, which we uh, have, con uh, we have uh, which we think that uh, may have uh, occurred due to the contribution of the steric hindrance as well as the uh, the uh, the low weight molecules in this um, in these two types actually have uh, increased the mobility of the shorter molecules under the electrostatic force in the electric spinning, which actually then as a result the PVP molecules stayed inside the uh, inner structure of the fibers, whereas the uh, siloxin molecules were on the outer structure. So after pyrolysis, the PVP gone away and we got a hollow structure in the fibers. So then we moved on to the FTIR to show the uh, evolution of the from the polymer stage to the ceramic stage of these fibers. Whereas in Figure A, I'm showing showing only the fibers that were derived from PVP. So these are carbon fibers. So as from S1 to the parallel stage, and as you can see that from S1 to parallel stage, we all the bonds or the absorption bonds of the carbon and hydrogen and carbon and oxygen are gone. And we just, uh, and so it, it says that the when after pyrolysis, the PVPs are going away. Whereas for the DDTS, DTDS and TPTS, as you can see that you can see the from S1 to parallel stages, the bonds, vinyl, silicon bonded to vinyl and silicon bonded to methyls are actually uh, uh, diminishing, the peaks are diminishing as the cross-linking are happening. And as the final, we reach the final stage of pyrolysis, we just get the silicon oxygen bond and the silicon carbon bond that are present in the pyrolyzed. Uh, ceramics. And I've shown the polymerization reaction that are happening in the presence of the dichromyl peroxide uh, or the uh, catalyst that is used uh, with this uh, polysiloxins while electric spinning. And, uh, and we see that uh, the as uh, and I mean, we can determine from these uh, reactions that are happening that the radical polymerization is happening and also the as the Vinyl bonds are decreasing, and uh, the silicon oxygen bond uh, are only they are being replaced on by silicon oxygen silicon bonds in the pyrolyzed ceramics. Then we did the enamel of this uh, pyrolyzed uh, uh, fibers as well as the pre-ceramic polymers. So the, in Figure A, we show the enamel of the pre-ceramic polymer. Uh, the liquid stage where it shows the vinyl and methyl groups bonded to silicon and oxygen. And also for DDTS, you can also see the presence of vinyl groups. Now, uh, in the cross-linked stage, we, uh, we can see that the vinyl and methyl groups are have diminished and we get a new uh, groups, which are methyl bonded to silicon and oxygen, which tells us that the uh, replacement of these vinyl groups with the silicon oxygen groups. And as, but uh, for the, as for, D, for DDTS uh, in the cross-linked polymer, you can see that the phenyl group is still present there, which means that the, it's not reacting or it's not contributing to the cross-linking stage. And in uh, carbon NMR, uh, we see the presence of PVP polymer in all the cross-linked fibers, which tells us that carbon is not, uh, PVP is not cross-linking with the polysiloxins and also the presence of silicon bonded to CHX, uh, tells us the cross-linking uh, that happened in the cross uh, in the fibers, as well as we see a sp2 hybridized carbon in the DDTS polymer, which is the contribution of phenyl groups. But in the silicon NMR pyrolyzed, uh, silicon NMR of the pyrolyzed samples, we just see the silicon ox uh, bonded to oxygen. We don't see the uh, peaks of silicon bonded to carbon. So we think that the Carbons that are present in the samples, they are mostly free carbon, and they are and the, if and if there are silicon carbon bonds, they are at a very low amount. That's why we don't see any silicon carbon bonds in the pyrolyzed samples of NMR.
Then we tried to do some uh, high temperature stability tests of these samples. As you can see over here, uh, I, I'm showing the sam uh, sample before uh, heating them up to 800 degrees Celsius and after heating them uh, at 800 degrees Celsius. As you can see, that PVP is gone after the heating, but, uh, but we have the DDTS, TTTS, and TPTS samples. But we can see that there are some shrinkage happened uh, after the heating at 800 degrees Celsius. I've, I've put the value of the weight return as well as the linear shrinkage. And we see that the highest uh, weight retention actually got for the DDTS sample, which had the phenyl groups. So, uh, we, so the presence of phenyl groups actually contributing uh, to keep some of the siloxins in the, uh, or some of the SIOC molecules in the uh, structure. But, and we also did the SEM after the heating, and you can see that the fiber structure retained, uh, I mean, all the ceramic fibers retained their fiber structure after the heating, but we can see some of uh, some fibers actually uh, melted or uh, uh, there are some beads in the fiber structure after the heating. Uh, and we also, we also did the XPS of these uh, samples after heating. And you can see that uh, the, actually what we found out is that actually the amount of carbon actually decreased, uh, um, uh, decreased a lot uh, after the heating. So a lot of carbon actually have went away and, and as expected, amount of oxygen have increased in the samples. Then we also did uh, uh, actually uh, acetylene flame test where we exposed the samples uh, to the acetylene flame at 2200 degrees Celsius uh, for 20 seconds. And we tried to see if what happens if we do give a, a thermal shock to the samples. As you can see, the DDTS as before actually survived, uh, survived uh, compared to the other samples where you can see that some of the samples especially TPTS, actually had uh, burning around the edges. Um, but when we looked at the SEM pictures, uh, the, survive, the samples after the test actually showed us that still after, the, after this acetylene flame test, we got uh, the fiber structure of the samples actually have retained. And, and, the, and the XPS of these samples also showed us the presence of silicon, carbon, and oxygen in the samples. Then we tried this, uh, as we have see, found out that this uh, SIOC fiber mats has, uh, is actually carbon rich. It has a lot of free carbons. We, try, we uh, actually employed this uh, SIOC electrodes in uh, lithium ion half cells. And if you look at the top figures here, this shows the uh, voltage profiles of for, for these three samples. As you can see that all three samples actually showed a very good uh, uh, charge capacity in the first cycles, as well as in the consequent second and third cycle. But, and, and, uh, and all three samples had actually uh, uh, reversibility, uh, first cycle, uh, first cycle reversibility uh, or first cycle Coulombic efficiency around 65 to 70%. And then we also tried the um, stability test of these uh, samples where we uh, cycled these samples for 50 cycles at 50 ampere hour per grams. And uh, among these three samples, the DTDS samples actually showed uh, highest uh, uh, retention, uh, actually almost 100% charge capacity retention after uh, 50 cycles. So, that, uh, so, so, so in summary, what we, uh, we actually uh, fabricated uh, as SIOC carbon rich SIOC fiber mats using electric spinning technique. And uh, this electric spinning technique enabled us to produce a large fiber mats that, that we were able to test, uh, do uh, test for high temperature stability as well as for uh, lithium ion battery applications. And, this, uh, and, it, and we found out that the best performing sample was the DDTS that showed the highest silicon oxygen bonding in the structure. Uh, so, so I'd like to thank Payar for the opportunity of this uh, research project and thank you all. Let me know if you <laughs>